This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Nobody talks to nobody most of the time, so probably it was never explained to the next person what's been going on. Then we got a case that's leaking water, and the store's too cold, so we're gonna adjust that yet. All right, guys, so we've got us a little cooler here that's got two condensers and two evaporators. Got one down here, got a pan here, you got a pan here on the other side. What's going on is it's not regulating temperature very well. And we're trying to figure out, is it a refrigeration issue? See, you've got one unit there, it's not running, which I hit the high pressure switch to see if it would shut it off. Oh, it must have satisfied. So uh, right now we're checking out the thermostat, see if it's just a thermostat issue or what. So we've got an evaporator fan there that's working just fine. We're gonna check this one here, make sure it's working. Gotta dig all this stuff out. Get in there and get into it. Wanna make sure the obvious stuff's taken care of first. So fan is running. Is always a good thing. Both condensers feel warm like they're working the way they should. I believe it's just a thermostat issue but I wasn't sure if it was a traditional thermostat that they used to regulate the temp or if they were using a pressure control and they are using a temperature control which is good. Then they got a defrost clock also because of that. So this is, like I said, not on the rack or anything. So let's get in here and see if we can find out where this thermostat bulb is at. Ooh, there's TXV. So the thermostat is in the discharge line, which is fine if you compensate for it. But unfortunately, they've got it set for 40 degrees here. That's not going to cut it. Um, I doubt it's just been dinked with. I'd rather see it in the return path. So we're going to move that. But I think what we're going to do is go ahead and replace it either way. Because it should always be the same problem. It should never hit temperature. And... So you've got thermostats controlling the contactor, which then controls the other stuff. That looks like an awful lightweight wire there. That's kind of scary. There's no way that's feeding all that stuff. So you got power coming in here. Interesting. Let's see what the amp roll is on that. 8.5, 8.9, what do we got up here on this? 8.3, so surprisingly, that seems a little, a little off. Got 11 there, so they're not completely 8.7 there. Yeah, that's some haphazard looking wiring, I'll tell you that. This all is kind of scary the way they did it. 10 amps there. They looped it from here to there. Can't do the same thing on the black. I'm not sure how they're breaking that. It don't make sense. I just don't like that at all. All right, so we killed the power. Power comes in at the top or 208. I've gotten like a turn and a half or more out of this breaker. And I did out of this side here too. Go ahead and finish tightening up some of this stuff here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change the thermostat. We're gonna set it for about 10 degrees area below what they wanted at. So if they're wanting to say 35, we'll set it for 25. If they're wanting 37, we'll set it for 27. 
That way we don't freeze the product. Um, had to double check on that. I knew we'd do that on our uh, on the rack stuff, but I wasn't sure we was doing that on this little stuff. But we are. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. We'll just uh, make that bulb out of there and get her in place. I have a feeling what has happened because 40 degrees is really a high number. I think they've been trying to adjust it and it's just probably not been getting the work done and they've just set it higher and higher and now it's causing issues and nobody talks to nobody most of the time so probably was never explained to the next person what's been going on and uh, then we got a case that's leaking water and the store's too cold so we're gonna adjust that yet so we'll just swap this thing out piece for piece and run the wire up and across and over to the top which it goes right up through the hole and should be good to go can't get the other one out pull this one in I just stick it in there you would think you gotta get up and down a little bit further to be a little better there's no real great way to get up in there right there's the evaporator coil so if you think about it your temperature is always 10 or 15 degrees depending on how it's built you should have the temperature coming in to the coil would have to be lower as well but if this is laying up against one of these that would really throw it off so yeah it'd be great if we could get a little further up in there that would work probably a little bit better but that's where it's gonna go i'll see if i can get a little higher but i don't think i can all right so he's able to pull this back get that wire or the uh, bulb up into there that way it's not right beside the uh, coil and uh, that should help get a more even temperature the brown stuff you're seeing sesame seeds um, some of its breads in here and it's not mouse droppings or anything like that it's just uh, like I said from the bread hopefully it'll work a little bit better we'll get this back in there seal this back up old uh, silicone all that does is keeps the air as it gets shoved up through there falls out gets pulled back to here we've got her mounted up which I see I made a mistake here let me fix that real quick all right so let's get this set up about right which I think we are 10 15 ish there we go and flip this on and let's turn that up so that it don't click let's see where we're... seems like it's clicking on and off about 55 which might ain't off too much okay turn it down turn it on did chop that wire off and restripped it underneath there Go. Set this thing for 27 area, right in about the middle ish. I'll let it run. I'm gonna go here and work on this other uh, project. Tightened all these connections up in here. Check the contact. We took the cover off. We ain't gonna have any bugs in here. It's gonna get in it. So you can see there's a little part there. I about tempted to change it. But let's go ahead and run it and see if we have any issues. See if it shuts off at the right temperature. Could always switch it to the other unused contact point there that they didn't use. Make use of that. I think I'll do that when I come back over here. Alright, so we got the new condensate pan heater in there. Put the meter on it. Put it on max hold. And it pulls 7 amps, so that's working. Let's go ahead and let this thing run. We'll get it back together and then uh, come back and check it after we get some of this other stuff done. What we've got now is this one side gets about five degrees colder than the other. Check refrigerant pressures, which hard as heck to get into that. But we got into it with the probe instead of the gauges. These hoses I've had nothing but problems with. And so 
for adjusting the TXV, we were almost 16 degrees superheat on it. So we're gonna try to get that down maybe around nine, eight area. And uh, it's starting to let more refrigerant through on this coil now. Superheat's still only at 14 on this thing. It's very, very slow. But my hope is once we get this thing balanced out and putting out the cooling that it should, it should be at about the same speed as the other. Between that, the thermostat, and getting it a little bit better into the path there, should do a little bit better job. All right, so we had to clear off this bottom shelf, which they'd love to put all these little things in there to make it more decorative. So you gotta move all that out, get down here in the drain pan, and you can see we got a little bit of build up there in the drain along with the pan. Also, if you look at your air band, it's just a little dirty. So if your air can't get pulled back into the fan down here, it will be pulled in and pushed back up through the back of it, and it comes back down. So we gotta run the sweeper on that. It's and a pack full of crud. There's a pump in here somewhere. Usually, it's right there in that little spot right here. So, let's see if we can dig into that. There's a screw in there. Take the screw out. Pull all this out. And there's your little pump. So, a little pump doesn't get the water. It's not gonna pump it up to the top. So it pumps the water up to the top into a little heater pan up here, which is right here. And it just boils it away there with those big old 1500 watt elements. Yeah, everything's just a little bit um, tired, just a little bit. All right, got the old shop back, got the old filter pulled out. Uh, as you can see, there's not really that much water in that pump. So it appears most of it's right there. So I'm gonna put the vacuum cleaner on that drain hole right there that's all nasty and funky donkeyed. See if we can pull that right through. Let's see what we get here. Oh, forgot to put a battery in it. Second. Yeah, that's some nice stuff right there. So that'll kick on here in a second. Let's make sure it pumps up to the top. We don't leak out of the top. Yep, it pumped it up here, which is probably more than what it can handle, which is awesome. Wonderful. That's gonna be overfill here in a second. Alright, so he's able to pull some of that out. Made a little bit of a mess. Should have known that was going to happen. We'll check that cycle aspect here, see how that's doing. I'm sure it's probably flashing. But see if this water's getting warm. Heater element, don't feel. Yeah, it's hot. Okay. So we know that's working. That's good. Take this out and dump the water out. Can you believe I actually wanted to do this? Alright, so we get this last bit of gunk out of here. Those big old chunks I got all out. About as good as you can get it for now. So we'll sweep the rest of this crud out and go on to the heating issue they got. Alright, so we got that all cleaned up. Everything back together. Swept up the floor. All I gotta do is put those rags away and we should be good to go on this part. Maybe we can get their heat adjusted. Not sure, it's not on the controller, I don't believe. So, probably up on the roof in a thermostat on a, in a duct somewhere is what I'm guessing. All right, so we've got stat here with a remote sensor. Neck, it's a duct heater. And then the rest of them are all 
on the roof with the duck, uh, with the stats in the duck work. So this one here is on cool still, which we're just coming out of it. So it's running. Not seeing any flutters of flames. Look it over real good, make sure it's safe and go get the other ones. All right, so we got that one. Okay. So now all we gotta do is get the, those two, that one there, those then there, a few, a few of the others. All right, so you can hear the belts loose. Got it set on heat. There you go. It's nicely att attached there. That's the old control system. It don't work anymore. It was elaborate at one time, so. Six more to go, I think. A little bit loose. You can hear the squeaky squeak going on. And I think it's not straight, probably yet. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll tighten her up just a touch. All right. Just don't feel too bad there. It didn't get crazy and over tighten it. <clears throat> See if we get a squawk. Come on, let's go. To do. I've been here all damn day. Oh, that's kind of funky like a monkey. Why is the fan not coming on immediately? The fan shouldn't have ran non-stop. I have to check the fan, make sure it's on fan all the time. Can't remember. I think I think the carrier does shut off the fan when it goes into heat mode. We don't really do much of any preventative maintenance, so they just call when things break. Come on, let's go. Come, 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 come on, come on. Sounds a little less squeaky. All right. This one was loose as a goose. Swapped out one used belt for another used belt. So that'll be better. I did a video on this one once before. So you can see the suction line there. A little ice on it. Wait till you see the evaporator. She's a leaker. I've completely gone through this and cleaned it. You can see through there pretty good. So we're gonna have to melt this baby down. Check this out. So you take a look at it. She's a little rough. I'll just go ahead and just turn that off. Yeah. Look at this baby. I can't even get my phone back behind here. So we got a, a little birthing pain here, to say the least. So yeah, just a couple problems. It just happened. It was it was fine yesterday. <laughs> okay. Nah. Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna take a little while. I don't know if our. I think we're low on charge. Is our biggest issue. Clock, you can hear it running. It's set for a 60 minute defrost. There's no reason why three of them for an hour would not keep that thing clean. So I'm gonna try to knock off what I can knock off and then uh, melt the rest. Of, about the only thing you can do. This ought to make a difference. It'll make it a little easier. So see if we can just, oh, good grief. Come at it from here. And make it pop off the back or not. Like that. And then we'll work the back side a little more gently. He scores! Two in a row. So, yeah. Normally, I would not probably do this if it was a new one, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And he's worried about a few of his things getting spoiled. So, we'll get her, get her. All right, just got that little piece there left to go. And then we'll probably have to do the rest with water. You don't wanna get rough like that on the coils. Yeah, she's looking rough. Yeah. I'd say that's a little plugged up. Just a little. That may not have helped it a lot. Could just been storing the water in the bottom of the pan, but uh, we'll know here once we get her clean. Well, we're making progress. Got the backside completely. Yeah, never mind that. Got it cleaned up. It was pretty bad on the back. Got a lot of gunk out as you can see. 
Yeah, he said go ahead and get the floor wet, they'll clean it up. So, sounds good to me. Uh, got the fan blades out and got to finish getting that rest of that gunk out. I think I switched that to 134A a while back. It was a year ago, maybe. I forget. It's got a leak. Um, as you can tell, it's just, um, it's not getting replaced. So, we're going to go ahead and get that melted out of there. Got the handy dandy sprayer here. Thank goodness for that, because I mean, it really helps give you a control. Got them washed off along with this here. It had nasty stuff all over it. <sighs> Rinsed all that out, got it all cleaned up. Looks a lot better than what it did. I only have so much polish to go around. Uh, I got to blow these motors out with my blower yet. They got water all in them, but as long as you ain't using chemicals, I haven't had too many motors go out from just water. Um, usually you just dry them off, you're good to go. Not idea, but you know, there's not a whole lot you can do when it's impacted into the ice. Did check, make sure the thermostat that looks like it's about ready to go on a vacation. Uh, that it's uh, set on 35 area. See if we can get this turned on without getting shocked. There we go. That's always a good sign. No sparks. So let's go outside and See if we can reduce this. I'm assuming that's what's probably what's wrong. Clock does seem to be working. I did push it in uh, past the next defrost, which was just about ready to happen. So let's go outside. All right, so we got our drain hooked back up, suction on. I'm not gonna fool with the uh, high side just yet. I think we'll be fine. About guarantee what we're gonna find out is it's just really, really super low. Fan's not running. We'll scan it for leaks when we get done. At this point, it's uh, got to run. Side glass, definitely looking empty there. Yeah, they've got problems. They know they've got problems. Just unfortunately, it's not been handled. So go ahead and juice the juicy. Juice the goose. So we scanned everything up here. Nothing in any of the controls. It's so windy out here. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can see the water driplet coming across I mean it's 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 just there's no way you're gonna pick anything up out here I got nothing on the inside so once again it went low like it did a year ago or so about a pound and a half to almost two so it's uh it's beyond need and replaced but at this point I can't find it it's way way too windy out here uh, it's got a lot of flare fittings on it. It could very easily be on one of those. It could be on one of the controls, but I'm not picking anything up. So it's back up and running. I'm going to head on to the next one.